Published, 1505 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 20th of March 2018, updated, 2114 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 20th of March 2018 The families of two innocent boys who died when IRA bombs exploded in a sleepy Cheshire town have spoken of how their deaths remain a simple for peace, 25 years after the atrocity. Schoolboy Tim Perry, 12, and 3-year-old Jonathan Bull were both killed when two bombs hidden in separate cast iron litter bins detonated on March 20, 1993. Jonathan died at the scene while Tim passed away five days later when his life support was switched off following the senseless tragedy. Jonathan Ball, left 3, and Tim Perry, right, 12, were killed in 1993 after IRA bombs exploded in the small town of Warrington, Cheshire. Tim Perry was caught in the full force of the blast after going into town to buy his mum a card and a pair of Neville South All Everton football shorts, died 5 days later. In hospital, pictured, Tim's parents Wendy and Colin Perry, today Warrington fell silent as its community remembered the tragic events which unfolded 25 years ago, pictured L.R., Paul Comerford, Colin Perry, Wendy Perry, more than 50 other people were left with life-changing injuries after the two bombs were detonated within a minute of each other the day before Mother's Day. The atrocity in Warrington, Cheshire, shocked the world but no one has ever been prosecuted over Tim and Jonathan's deaths. This comes despite former IRA commander Martin McGuinness describing the bombings as a shameful act and expressing his personal regret. In 2013, over the past quarter of a century, the innocent victims' names have become synonymous with the campaign for peace. Warrington fell silent today as its community remembered the tragic events which unfolded 25 years ago. The poignant commemoration service on Bridge Street was attended by HRH the Princess Royal and the Ambassador of Ireland to the United Kingdom, Adrian O'Neill. Jonathan's brother, Paul Comerford, second from right, spoke of his family's heartache. The tragic events of that day broke all our hearts, but it shattered Jonathan's mums into tiny pieces that would never be mended. Emotional Paul said that Jonathan's mother died 16 years after her son, and that he believes she died of a broken heart ahead of the 25th anniversary. Wendy Perry opened up about her cheeky son who crammed a lifetime into 12 short years. She said, he was a normal 12-year-old who loved life, he was having golf lessons, he played squash with his dad, he played football for a Sunday team in school, he was having guitar lessons and he was a sea scout and he just got his solo sailing certificate, he wanted to do everything all the time, he had so many friends because he was so bubbly, he could be cheeky and rude sometimes but he loved everything. It was like he crammed a lifetime into 12 years. Jonathan's brother Paul Comerford, 41, also reflected on his family's heartache 25 years on. HRH Princess Royal attended the memorial in Warrington Town Center today, to mark 25 years since the tragedy he said, March 20, 1993, is a day none of us will ever forget, it affected many, many people, none more so than our family, the tragic events of that day broke all our hearts, but it shattered Jonathan's mums into tiny pieces that would never be mended, she died 16 years later almost to the day of a broken heart, so we his surviving family including three brothers, nephews, nieces, aunts, uncles and cousins will be remembered bring him and the people affected on this 25th anniversary, on the day of the bomb, authorities said, inadequate, warnings had been received. Crews from 17 ambulances dealt with casualties and a team of four plastic surgeons traveled to Warrington Hospital from the Regional Burns Unit at Winston Hospital, Nosley, pictured, a fireman in 1993 after the bombing, a court and off street in Warrington after the IRA bombing which devastated the lives of two families Thyra later confirmed it made two telephone bomb warnings, one to police and one to a charity helpline, although Cheshire police chief said there was no mention of Warrington, making predicting a location impossible. Less than 30 minutes after the warnings, the blasts happened within a minute of each other. Two bombs, hidden in separate cast iron litter bins, exploded on Bridge Street just after 12.12 p.m., the first outside a British gas showroom and the second near Argos and Boots. The first explosion drove panicking shoppers into the path of the next blast just seconds later, with police describing the bins and shrapnel as huge hand grenades. Colin and Wendy Perry pictured in 1993 at a memorial for their son, 12-year-old schoolboy Tim Weaving passers by pause in 1993 to add their flowers and prayers at a memorial in Bridge Street buses were organized to ferry people away from the scene and 20 paramedics, some on motorcycles, were sent to administer on-the-spot treatment. Crews from 17 ambulances dealt with casualties and a team of four plastic surgeons traveled to Warrington Hospital from the Regional Burns Unit at Winston Hospital, Nosley. Jonathan Ball, who was in town with his babysitter buying a Mother's Day card, was killed at the scene. 
Tim Perry was caught in the full force of the blast after going into town to buy his mum a card, and a pair of Neville South All Everton football shorts, died five days later in hospital. Tim fought for life with massive brain injuries at Liverpool's Walton Hospital for five days before his life support was switched off. Jonathan Ball, who was in town with his babysitter buying a Mother's Day card, was killed at the scene. The atrocity in Warrington, Cheshire, shocked the world but no one has ever been prosecuted over Tim and Jonathan's deaths in the last 18 years. Parents Colin and Wendy Perry have run the Tim Perry-Jonathan Ball 